Kronos being the name of time. And so in the writing of the scripture, often where we saw time, we saw the word Kronos or Kairos. And time, we look at it as a measurement of the progress of existence. It is actually the way that we arrange our lives on a daily basis. We look at the time. We want to go to bed at a certain time. We wake up at a certain time. We need to go to work and go make appointments at certain times. And time is actually not a bad thing when it's properly handled. In 1964, anybody remember way back in 1964? You don't have to raise your hand. Tell by the way you dress if you know 1964. But 1964, there was a rock band by the name of the Rolling Stones, and they released a song entitled Time is on my side. Day in 1964. <laughs> Time is on my side. And the, the message of this song was to someone that they cared for. And they were telling them that it seems that you want to be free. And since you want to be free, then go. But you will be back after some time has passed. In the song, they were saying, so you, you want to be free? I bet you'll come running back because time is on my side. And I believe the Rolling Stones came to this conclusion because time has a way of teaching us things that nobody else can teach us. Time teaches us in a way that no one else can teach us. And for some of you in this place, the only thing you are waiting for, for your blessing to come to pass, is for time to pass. You're waiting for Kronos to move and Kairos to appear. I'll explain that later. Because both of them mean time and we're looking at Greek terminology. But Kronos is time Itself. Everybody say chronos. chronos. All right, so that's why you have a chronometer and a chronograph, and we wear them on our wrists and we sit them on our nightstands because it keeps us in tune with time. But when we have assignments and goals and deadlines, time has a way of sneaking up on us. Mm -hmm. See, now let's move on to Nehemiah because Nehemiah has intentionally taken, I said intentionally taken, intentionally means on purpose. N Nehemiah on purpose took a project that nobody else had been able to do for 100 years. Amen. The temple had been destroyed and, and the children of Israel had been scattered, some taken into slavery and bondage and trying to buy themselves out of slavery. But for 100 years, this had been going on. And Nehemiah one day asked about the condition of his people and the temple of where he came from. And when he recognized the condition of his people and the broken and destroyed temple, he, who he was, would not let him rest. Amen. Amen. In spite of all the time that has gone by, 100 years had gone by, Kronos had flown away, but yet once he heard about this, he could not rest because time will give you times of up and down. Times will be good one day and not so good the next day. But sometimes you just have to wait for a little time to pass. The challenge is after a certain amount of time has passed, we struggle with wondering, is it even possible? Because if it could be done, it would have already been done, is how we think sometimes. And so in the closing of Nehemiah chapter 4, you don't have to turn back there, but I talked a little bit about this last week. The children of Israel, God's chosen people, were walking in victory. Because if you remember Back in chapter 4, last week I talked to you about the mess in the middle. They got the wall halfway done and realized that they were still looking at a mess because somebody didn't take out the trash. And so you got to understand that even though they got to this point of victory, they did not just arrive there. You don't get to victory by just arriving there. They had to overcome some frustration. 
They had to overcome some discouragement. And they had been discouraged by so many things that were around them. However, they were able to get over it. Ask your, tell your neighbor, you got some stuff to get over. Yes. 